This is Dr. Ron here. I want to talk to you guys about uh, something that I deal with almost on a daily basis when patients come into my office. Is that they come into my office and they say, hey, you know what, doc, I've been on a very low calorie diet or a 1200 calorie diet or a 1400 calorie diet or a 1600 calorie diet. And I'm not, uh, I'm losing weight, but I still feel really bad. Or um, I'm losing weight, but my blood sugars are still high. And the reason for that is, is for a multitude of reasons, which I will get to in this video. So for you guys who don't know me, my name is Dr. Cheng Ron, I'm an internal medicine physician here in Texas. I want to talk to you about calorie restriction. Uh, calorie restriction is not something I recommend for a multitude of reasons. Here's what happens when you restrict on calories. A lot of people go on some sort of a calorie restriction diet to attempt to lose weight. While a lot of them can be successful, the problem is they're messing up their hormones, their metabolism, uh, their behaviors, and they're messing up um, a lot of things that, that really occur in the first place, which is malnourishment. A lot of people who are obese, who are bigger, who are fatter, are malnourished, believe it or not, in one way or another, uh, with uh, different phytonutrients, and for them to have a calorie-restricted diet, it may be detrimental to their health. And it can make them store fat, get higher blood sugars, and worsen type 2 diabetes, worsen pre-diabetes, and worsen insulin resistance, and worsen inflammation, which is the worst of all. So, how does this happen? When someone goes on a diet and they start restricting their calories, a couple things happen. One, they get hungry. Two, they're not happy about it. Three, they get hungrier. And four, they become malnourished, okay? And so let's say someone is, is, is trying to lose an X amount of weight. And in theory, in theory, if they cut down on a certain number of calories, they're able to lose a certain percentage of fat that's on their body, right? Well, that's not really how the body works. The, the biology is far more complicated than that. I'm gonna teach you how it really works. So let's talk about the, the first reason why it doesn't work is behavior. Whenever you're hungry, whenever you're stressed, um, and you want, to, you want to eat and you're neglecting, uh, not really neglecting, but you're, you're not recognizing the fact that you're hungry and, and you continue to be stressed and not be very happy, um, that stress perpetuates and makes you make make really bad choices uh, later on in the day, later on in the week, the next day, and um, those food choices may not be the best for you. So behavior-wise, it's very difficult to control. And those people who are calorie restricted um, are usually have some sort of emotional eating to begin with, right? Everybody are emotional eaters. We're all emotional eaters. I'm gonna put that on the table. Everybody's an emotional eater, and when we're restricting ourselves, we, our mentality is that we don't we don't like this. Like, I don't like restricting myself. I don't like the fact that I don't get to eat what I want, but maybe I can just have a little bit of what I want and be okay with it. But in actuality, that's also not how it works. And so, um, for example, I had a few patients who were on Weight Watchers or on some sort of calorie restricted diet, and. Um, and they come to me and um, they're still not losing as much weight as they want uh, and they're type 2 diabetics and they're like, you know what, my blood sugar is higher. Like, why, why are my blood sugars higher? Well, I usually like, you know what, open your MyFitnessPal or open your Weight Watchers app. Let me take a look at exactly where you're eating. A lot of times uh, when people are eating for their points in the point system in Weight Watchers um, or in other programs, the problem is their content of carbohydrates, processed sugars, is still up there in terms of percentage eaten. And so if they're eating these processed sugars, grain-based carbohydrates, um, uh, wheat, um, and, and uh, processed and refined carbohydrates, uh, bad fats, the problem is they're gonna continue to feel bad because, because every time they eat this particular item, and it doesn't matter how many calories it's worth, it could be zero calories and be bad for you, they're increasing their insulin resistance. As insulin goes up, guess what happens? And when insulin goes up, the fat cells start dividing and multiplying, and the, and the fat cells start really enlarging, and you tend to build more fat. 
Well, a lot of people who are like this tend to lose weight. They also lose a lot of muscle, muscle mass. And I hope that makes sense to you. Um, so behavior-wise, they tend to reach for things that are not so great for them, number one. Number two, the content that they eat is really pro-inflammatory. It's still, it's still not good for the hormones. And, uh, and which brings me to my second point. You have to eat for your hormones and not eat for calories. Calories in, calories out. That, that is a myth. It doesn't work when you're trying to be healthy, when you're trying to lose fat, lose weight. Not every calorie is, is, is made the same. Okay. And so what I talk about eating for your hormones is that everything, every piece of food that goes into your mouth is either going to be good for you or not good for you. There's not much in between. And that what you want to do, especially if you're a type 2 diabetic or pre-diabetic or obese or insulin resistant, uh, what you want to do is eat foods that keep the, the insulin level down so you'll always be burning fat. And those types of foods are, are, are vegetables and proteins and, and the good fats that are, that are there, okay? And those things will not raise your insulin level. It will make sure that your body continues to be in the fat catabolism process. Catabolism means breaking down. So fat breaking down process. And you'll continue to burn those fat and try to reduce your belly size and uh, make you feel a whole lot better. And there's, there's a lot more to it than that. But um, and you know when I say not all calories are created equal, traditionally what nutritionists and dietitians have done is oh well, let's look at let's look at um, the amount of calories and in the gram of fat versus the amount of calories in a gram of carbohydrates is much more. So in theory, fats are bad for you, right? Well, no, that's that's actually not right. Whenever you eat that gram of fat, even though it's a higher caloric intake, okay, you're still burning the fat. Your body is, is hormonally is still burning fat. But when you take uh, that same gram of fat and if, if you replace it with a, with a refined carbohydrates, refined sugar, um, these then that will spike your insulin level. As that insulin level spikes, you will continue to store fat. So that's why people, even though they're on a really restricted diet, a 1200 calorie diet, 1400 calorie diet, they're losing weight, but they're not losing fat is because of this process. It's because whatever they're eating, they're still having insulin level spikes, okay? And when they have insulin level spikes, it continues to store fat. So it can be very detrimental to what you want to do. Okay, um, a lot of low, low uh, caloric diets don't work because they don't really focus on the fact that um, they, um, each calorie is not created equal. They don't focus on the fact that when you eat a gram of fat versus a gram of carbohydrate versus a gram of protein, they do different things to your body, right? And so, and so the the content is what really drives what it's going to do to your body. It's not going to be the calories. It's simply not going to be the calories. Um, I have other patients who come in and say, hey doc, I've been on a calorie restricted diet. I'm doing great. I lost a lot of weight. I think I feel good, but I still have sugar cravings. Or what I, and, and I really, one day I'm going to succumb to my sugar cravings. Well, the problem with sugar cravings is that as you consume more grain-based carbohydrates and refined sugars, you tend to crave more of those things, like a pastry. When you eat one pastry, you tend to, to eat more of them, right? And, but that doesn't happen when you intake um, fats, for example, and I'm talking about the good fats. And the, the sugar cravings come from the fact twofold. One is that they're so calorie restricted that they're hungry, and two, they're, whenever they're hungry, they tend to reach for things that may not be the best for them. And when they put that into their body, they continue to have sugar cravings. And so these sugar cravings are detrimental to really any diet. That's why a lot of diets fail. Most diets fail because they have this, uh, this caloric restrictions that's, that's there. Um, but what I have created, what I've created is this a type of diet that is very different, okay? And I tell people, if you're on my diet, which can be downloaded on my website at ronmd.com slash diabetes, it's R-U-A-N-M-D dot com slash diabetes uh, for free. It's a free ebook. Um, in that diet plan, there are three sections that are not limited, which
which means that they have they can have as much as they want and three of the sections are relatively limited based on the size of their hand and their fist okay and so when we look at categories of food that you can have as much as you want in fact there's minimums that I want people to have then we're not really looking at calories and if people are hungry on my eating plan then they're doing something wrong you should never be hungry on any sort of dietary plan if you're hungry that means you did not eat enough earlier in the day or that you're nutrient deficient and for people who want to reverse the type 2 diabetes nutrition is numero uno nutrition is number one when you have when you have good nutrition your body actually works to uh, burn fat decrease the amount of blood sugar that's in the body and um, helps you reverse diabetes helps you um, with the assistance of your physician reduce medications or even eliminate medications but we have to make sure that your your, your nutri the, the food that you're eating is nutrient dense uh, like uh, plant-based foods like and, and um, natural animal proteins and fats uh, grass-fed beef for example uh, a butter made, made from uh, grass-fed cows for example and these are all really good examples of the fats and the proteins and the plant-based foods that you should be eating to help not only control your disease but actually reverse your disease make you feel a whole lot better make you think a whole lot better have better relationships with the people that are around you and and but this is what it's all about and so Whenever you go on a, on a dietary plan and you think that you have to calorie restrict, really think again. Really think and understand that it's not about just calorie restriction, it's about the food choices that you make, okay? And the idea that eating everything in moderation is okay is completely debunked. It's, it's, it's not okay. When you eat in moderation of the things that you continue to eat that causes inflammation in your body, that causes insulin resistance in your body, your brain is still using that food, that processed sugar, that carbohydrate, your brain is still using that as a reward. And when your brain uses that as a reward, you're never dealing with the underlying problem of a reward replacement strategy. And what a reward replacement strategy is, uh, is, is basically instead of reaching for one type of food, you reach for another type of food that you like just as much but it's not gonna raise your insulin level, okay? A good example is instead of going for chips, uh, going for uh, wedges of cheese, okay? And even though the wedges of cheese per gram has higher calories, but guess what? It's not gonna raise your insulin level nearly as much as the bag of chips. Not only that, when you eat the bag of chips, you tend to crave even more bags of chips because that's what carbs do to you. Carbs, when you consume it, it makes you crave it even more. It's an addiction response and it's a dopamine response that's in your brain. But when you eat that cheese or when you eat uh, that, the, the celery, when you eat the, the carrot or fruit, you don't have that response. And you tend to eat things that are better for yourself. And you tend to make good choices about yourself. And this is all about eating for yourself, eating for your hormones, eating for the way that you feel. It's not about calories. It's never been about calories, and that's why people with caloric, uh, low calorie diets fail over and over again because they're not dealing with their triggers, they're not dealing with their food addiction problems, they're not dealing with their emotional eating. They're not, they're still using the same food as a reward, and they don't have a reward replacement strategy that's, that's necessary. So, when I created this diabetes reversal plan, uh, which you guys are just joining, it's found on my website, ruanmd.com slash diabetes. When I created this, this plan, and it's free if you guys want to download it, um, the idea is to have people reach for those, those foods that are in the unlimited categories for them to replace that reward instead of using refined carbohydrates, refined sugars, and, and sweets, um, and processed sugars, uh, or even sugar substitutes as a reward. Because nothing is more addicting than refined sugars and even sugar substitutes. And um, the, when, you, when you want to eat something, go ahead and eat it, but make sure you understand that the content matters. The content absolutely matters, okay? And so, you know, people are asking, what about fruits? Okay, what fruits are, are, are the, the, the best for type of diabetes? And don't fruits, 
have sugar in them? Do I want to avoid some fruits? Well, yes or no, you know, this, 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 the answer is not really concrete for everybody, but fruits are generally good, generally, but depends on how insulin resistant you are. Fruits are generally good because a lot of these fruits also contain fiber. And when you eat, when you eat a very natural uh, sugar uh, fructose, like a, a fruit, well, naturally with fiber in it, and that's going to help you, that's going to eventually help you with the insulin resistance, even though it does contain sugar. Now, let's say instead of eating an apple, you, you, you drink a can of apple juice, okay? That can of apple juice may not have the, the, uh, the benefits of eating an apple because without the, without the natural fibers that are in it, it may be detrimental for your body, okay? Uh, but, but if you look at fruits, I, I split fruits into different types, okay? Generally, berries are pretty good. And, and these different types of fruits also have different glycemic indices, which is the amount of uh, sugar that's in them. But uh, overall, they're, they're generally good. Uh, fruits are also in my uh, diabetes reversal eating plan um, that is in a different section. And these sections are actually predefined of exactly what they are and how much you should eat for them. In fact, there's minimums you should eat for some of these things. But fruits are generally okay. And if you think, if you think that diabetes is out of your grasp or that you're too far along, you know, I've seen people get off of insulin. I've seen uh, in a very short amount of time. I've seen people get off their medicines in a very, very short amount of time um, and get their A1Cs down with, uh, with my help. I'm talking about my patients. A lot of people who use these eating plan um, to help them reduce their medicines or eliminate medicines, um, they are much further along than you think, all right? Even if you're 80 years old, 90 years old, you can still eat the, the eat right for your body so that you can actually reverse the disease. So no one is too far along in type 2 diabetes, and no one is too early. A lot of people who are pre-diabetic, and they say, oh, I'm just pre-diabetic, I'm just going to watch my carbs and hopefully be okay. Well, that's not necessarily true. If you're pre-diabetic, if you're eating inflammatory foods, then it's still going to progress in type 2 diabetes. It's still going to progress in insulin resistance, right? And so my point here, everybody, is to, is to, when you want to, when you want to restrict calories is not the right thing to do. Instead of restricting calories, think about what you can substitute for different categories of food. Don't think about caloric restriction. Think about what you're gonna put into your body so that you can use your hormones to continue the fat burning process, continue to decrease your insulin levels so that you can, it can help you reverse the type two diabetes and pre-diabetes, help you lose fat, help you feel better, help reduce the inflammation in your body, help you decrease the joint pains that's in your body, help you decrease chronic pain like fibromyalgia, all these things work, okay? Uh, thank you for listening once again. If you want to download my free eating plan, uh, it is uh, ruanmd.com slash diabetes, and the link is in the description of this video. And if you want recipes, I actually have a book out that just got published, uh, and it's on Amazon, and if you click that link that's in the description, with this video, it will have a link for that as well, okay? Thank you guys so much, very, very much for spending this much time with me. I'm really, really happy to see that people actually are investing so much into their health, and it truly makes me happy. All right, thank you very much.